The red herring fallacy involves diverting your attention from the real issue by focusing on an issue that has only surface level relevance. I know what you're thinking, and you're right, this has nothing to do with a fish. So why is it called the red herring fallacy? Well, the origin of the fallacy goes back to the 1800s in an old hunting technique. It's where a hunter will set loose a fox for his hound to track down. But before the dog's release, somewhere along the trail, a slimy red herring is being dragged perpendicular to it, zigzagging it across the path. And so if the hound stays on track and follows the fox scent all the way through, then yay, he gets his bacon strip. But on the other hand, if he gets off course and follows the fishy scent, that's a no-no. He followed the red herring, bad dog. I think you get the analogy here. The fox scent is casted as the real issue. It's what we're supposed to be getting at in any dialogue. And the red herring smell is some diversion from the real issue. A prime example can be seen after Donald Trump is asked to expand upon his claim that Hillary Clinton didn't have the right presidential look. She doesn't have the look, she doesn't have the stamina. I said she doesn't have the stamina. And I don't believe she does have the stamina. To be president of this country, you need tremendous stamina. The quote was, you I have, just don't think wait, she has wait a Wait a minute, unless you ask me a question. Did you ask me a question? But also, the red herring isn't just limited to a debate type setting. On the contrary, there are in fact many different styles and flavors of red herring. In film, it's showcased in a whodunit scenario where the audience is led astray by different clues. Another technique is used in Harry Potter when throughout the whole series you think that Snape is always somehow a part of the bad guy gang. And it's not until the very end that we find out that all this time, the dude was a homie to the max, to the point of even laying down his own life. The red herring can also be used as a tool for persuasion. Hey, honey, I know you don't like it when I borrow your car, but I was gonna go get you some Starbucks. Don't you love Starbucks? And we're just scratching the surface here. The red herring, like I said, can take on many different forms. I mean, this whole video can even be a red herring just to lead you down there to hit the like and subscribe buttons.